Hey Kentucky, welcome back. It's time for a game of Do We Care? We have help from our Inquisitor of the Day and Hey Kentucky intern, but so much more, Maggie <laughs> Davis. Hello. Maggie, thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. What is up first? Well, lawmakers in Frankfurt have been bickering over whether to allow public agencies like county governments and school boards to publish notices online rather than to pay for a legal ad in the local newspaper. Josh and Adam, do we care about this? I'm going to be really honest with you, Adam. I don't know if I care about this all, so I'm going to rely on you to tell me Good. whether I should care I think care you about should it. care, right? Okay. Because government transparency is critically important. And I think that governments ought to, be, uh, ought to be required to make the public aware. And while I recognize that online has become uh, the, the, uh, the, the platform of choice for much of the public, we still have a lot of people who don't have access to home computers, folks. So uh, that local paper, the local press is vital to the health of a democracy, and I think government ought to have to uh, be in partnership with that. All right, Maggie, what is up next? It turns out that one of Matt Bevin's final acts as Kentucky's governor last year was to appoint his executive director of boards and commissions to five different boards across the state. Do we care about this so-called parting gift, guys? Uh, I do care about it because we've talked a lot on this show sort of about the the optics with Governor Bevin and, oh. and some of, you know, the, the relationships he had with people and not always looking like it was above board. This feels like another one of those things you just don't want to have people asking questions about. You really don't. And I just think it further communicates uh, Governor Bevin's lack of judgment, particularly in the end. I don't know if he lost his mind with the pardon <laughs> gate, but putting one person on five different boards just because they're your buddy. Does one person even have that much time? They really know. shouldn't. Uh, a bad move. Uh, <laughs> All right, Maggie, what about it? A proposal in the Kentucky House would make elections for the Louisville mayor nonpartisan, like they already are here in Lexington. Do we care about House Bill 605? Uh, I, I think that in small scale races like this, there is some value to sort of letting constituents judge the, the candidates on their merits and not having party attached to it because so often local issues don't necessarily look like It shouldn't they be do partisan, bigger, right? But here's the thing. Areas. The voters in Louisville about 20 years ago decided to merge the city and the county. Mm -hmm. And they literally voted on this. And when they voted, it was uh, to include a partisan approach to, uh, to government there. And that's something the public has voted. Uh, and approved. So you think keep it in place? I think in we place. should keep it in place because I don't think the legislature ought to have the ability to usurp directly the will of people to take that expressed at the ballot box. All right, Maggie, up next. Louisville Congressman John Yarmouth showed his Facebook followers how he avoided the ban on a large bottle of hand sanitizer aboard airplanes, saying, there's a Kentucky solution to everything. He used a miniature Woodford Reserve bottle to carry on some of his hand sanitizer. Do we care about this? I care about this from a creativity standpoint and a little bit of Kentucky branding thrown out there. Uh, it's super. Listen, John Yarmouth <laughs> is a buddy of mine, and okay. people want to know what he's like in real life. And this that's is what exactly he's like what he's like. I mean, he is a blast to be around. He made an important point with a pretty humorous <laughs> approach. John Yarmouth, that's why they call him Congressman McAwesome in Louisville. <laughs> and brings Kentucky into it once again. Absolutely. All right, Maggie, what's up? A Louisville Hispanic business owner who was recently robbed of $1 million in jewelry is now complaining that police refuse to take fingerprints or review security video in the case, claiming that officers care less about crime in that part of town. What do you make of this claim? Well, you hope that it's not true, you know, but, but I mean, if you're trusting the source here, then that's not a great look. It's not a good look, and, and let's hope it's not true, yeah. but it, it's a serious allegation in a time and a place where there are lots of concerns about uh, the ability of people to look at situations uh, through the, the appropriate prism, uh, it's certainly the allegations of this magnitude ought to be followed up in, and I hope they're disproven. But if they're not, there needs to be some discipline. Something's got to come. All right, Matt.